hell do you have to wear a hoodie to hide the fact that you've just bought land, Janelle and David? Like, let's let's talk about that, right? Like, are you well? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but she's back and back to curly hair as well. This time with a recap of the fifth episode of the eighth season of Teen Mom 2. To kick off the episode, Leah sent the kids over to Grandma Sandy's while she, um, Oreo, and her brother-in-law finished packing up the green carpeted monstrosity of a house. In this scene, to me, she looked like a blonde haired version of Pensatucky, so I don't really think the rehab worked. Next up, Chelsea drops Aubrey off for her last day of kindergarten when her dad calls. She asks him whether or not Adam is up to date with his child support, which I thought was a little weird considering she's the baby mama and not Randy, right? Then Barbara takes Jace and her other grandson turned son, um, Gabriel, over to the beach where Jace tells her that he missed her while he was over in Florida with Janelle and David and Marissa. And then Barbara puts him in charge of asking Janelle whether or not she can come on the next vacation, which I thought was a little bit too much. That poor boy has been through way too much and has like way too much responsibility for his young and tender age, in my opinion. And we get to see Janelle and David talk about the land that they're going to be buying and we all know David has no money and no job but Janelle is kind enough to make it seem like his broke ass is going to be pitching in a single penny for it so I thought that was kind of funny and then we head over to um, Petty Betty and Poppy's house where they're taking the kids off to day camp or something like that and Kale immediately starts badgering um, Javi about when he's going to be moving out of their marital home. He tells her that although he does have an apartment lined up he can't move into it just yet because the inspection isn't completed and then he asks like hey can I like crash in our guest bed Bedroom. and Kale of course says no which to me was really really sad considering this is like a guy who literally just got back from you know deployment like you're not gonna cut him a break in any area of his life at all like even when he's trying to help you out with your kid that he literally has no real ties to I thought that was kind of sad despite his like soon-to-be ex-wife being an evil witch um, Javi is still trying to make like small talk with her and stuff but of course Kale has no intentions of being an adult throughout this separation so she tries to shut every single thing down like at some point Javi innocently asked her like you know what are you up to today she's like none of your business and it's true it is none of his business but he's just asking to like pass the time or to make the like you know less tension in the car you know how small a car is when two people are angry at each other he's trying to lighten the mood but of course Kale you know she doesn't know how to deal with a happy mood you know so they finally make it back over to their house and Javi like casually says wow it's as beautiful as I left it and Kale's like <coughs> as you left it over in South Dakota, Chelsea provides the perfect scene for me to run over and check on my dinner while it plays out. And then I return to find out that um, Leah wants to take the girls on vacation. Apparently she originally told the dads that she was gonna take them to Hawaii, but she changed her mind because like the flight is what, 11 hours allegedly or whatever, and she wants to take them to Mexico instead, and she needs to ask their permission. She tells the producer about needing to ask the dads about like taking the girls out of the country. And like in conversation with her, she's like, I hope that like me coming to Jeremy in advance sets an example for him. I know Corey's gonna be fine, but Jeremy's gonna give me a lot of trouble. And I'm like, it is so funny how this season, all of a sudden, Corey is a saint and a model co-parent now that he's settled down with his wife and Leah knows that they're here to stay, right? I think that the fact that Jeremy's girlfriend, Brooke, is still new is still troubling Leah because we all saw last season that she still wanted him back. And so she's looking at all these reasons to nitpick at him and it's just so transparent. Anyway, back in Delaware, Javi gets into the house with Kale and you know she hands over all the mail that he missed out on while he was in deployment and she kept them for him and so he's just like looking through them trying to sort them figure out like you know what happened are these bills I'm behind on you know regular people stuff and Kale's like hurry up are you done yet you better get out this is not your home anymore and Javi's like dude chill sit down like can I look at these things like really quickly or what she's like no I got things to do I'm going to Starbucks and Poppy's like you are kicking me out to go to Starbucks? And she's just like, yeah. And so Javi's, uh, and so Javi's like, you know what? Like, this is a lot of mail. Can I throw some of this out? Like, I've already paid some of these bills or whatever. And you know, Petty Betty was like, no, the garbage is full. You better take it outside. And so Poppy's like, okay, fine. I'll take it outside and you know, I'll throw these uh, and I'll get the keys while I'm out there too. You know, being a regular adult, you know, while dealing with the witch from hell. So he leaves and he comes back with his keys and Kale's like, mm -mm. I wanna see you put them in the key thing. Gotta double check them. Let me see if these are the right real keys. And it's like, you were so disrespectful. Honestly, Poppy, you were too nice to this girl. If it were me knowing that my name is on the deed and the title to this home, I'd be like, I am staying in my guest bedroom, you know, until this divorce is done and I get half of my house, girl. Like, do not try me. Do not try me. You are too nice of a man. Especially like in light of the fact that you wanna stay in her son's life, do not allow 
her to treat you like this boy. Now on the other side of Looney Land, Janelle and David are in the car. Like they just finished coming out of what I assume to be like a doctor's appointment. And like he's rubbing her belly and they're talking about like the baby kind of thing in code. Well, what they think is code, but what intelligent people can see as plain old, you know, planning. Honestly, you guys, it is so sad how often this young girl gets pregnant. Can you believe she's been pregnant over six times by over four different people and she's only like what 24 years old like that's straight up disgusting anyway they giggle about the baby bump and janelle tells david that she's gonna have to wear hoodies to hide it from people and then the next day um at their home the producers ask them when they're gonna reveal the pregnancy that they were just gossiping about the other day as they show them the footage of them talking about you know what is obviously a child and then janelle and david try to be like oh we were, you know, he was rubbing my tummy for no reason. We weren't talking about a baby. You know, we were talking about our land. Why the hell do you have to wear a hoodie to hide the fact that you just bought land, Janelle and David? Like, let's, let's talk about that, right? Like, are you well? The producers were not buying it either. They were like, okay, sure, you were talking about land so is it a girl land or a boy land and i lived again back in dakota we're not talking about chelsea this time jeremy is there for work so he's in the trailer with his dad and he gets a text from leah asking about taking the kids to mexico so he and his dad don't think it's a safe place and honestly i don't think that they were coming from an informed place but rather like you know people where they live in these bubbles and like sort of racist communities where they think that they're up here and everyone else is down here despite the fact that a lot of you know people of color and other minorities or whatever are doing much better than them. I think this is one of those sorts of conversations, like two like backwoods people sitting in a trailer talking about, I don't want my kids to go to Mexico. They're too good for Mexico. They'll get kidnapped over there type of shit. I was just disappointed with this conversation all around. It was so uninformed and uneducated, but I do not expect anything else from someone like Jeremy. And for some reason, Jeremy decides to be a shit disturber about the trip by calling Corey and asking him whether or not Leah mentioned taking the girls over to Mexico to him. And Leah had not been, you know, given the opportunity to talk to Corey about it at that point. So Corey was like, no. And Corey did not play into Jeremy's stupidity by like gossiping with him about, you know, Leah and being like, oh, she ain't shit, blah, blah, blah. He was like, oh no, I didn't know about it. Um, I guess I'll wait to hear about it. And like left the conversation. Next, Taylor texts Chelsea to tell her that Adam is behind on child support um, and has a court date for it because he's behind around thirty-six to fifty-six hundred dollars. And then Chelsea then goes and texts uh, who was it, Randy, about it or calls him about it. Two things I noticed in this scene: number one, I like Chelsea's slippers, and number two, I wonder why she never talks to her mom about anything. It's kind of like interesting to me um so back at joe and v's house they reveal the fact that javi called joe the other night and joe then says that he really does want isaac to stay in javi's life and then back at miss miserable's house her friend calls her and then kale starts bitching about like how javi isn't moving out of the house quick enough for her brown bay to come out of the attic she then says that she expects that she and javi will remain civil for the sake of the kids <laughs> lies and that she really does like his relationship with the boys and that she wants to facilitate them and she also lets her friend know that isaac does plan on staying in Isaac's life you know the child that is not his and you know like it's just so odd at this point because it's like you really acknowledge the fact that he is a good person to your kid but you still treat him like shit or like he is obligated to be in that child's life. Hey guys, if Kale was a step parent, I feel like she'd be one of those crazy step parents where if they get in the fight with you or whatever they'll go text your kid and tell you um and she would go text your child and tell your child, oh my God, your dad ain't shit, I hate him, and like do all this messy stuff that you sometimes hear about crazy adults doing. She's so lucky that Javi is not like as, as spiteful and as evil as she is. When Kale gets off the phone with her friend, a producer lets her know that he thinks that Javi is gonna be dropping by later to drop off the kids, and then Kale starts bitching again. She's like, oh, I've been single for so long since he's been deployed, like, I don't like this. It's like, what? This person is going to drop off the kids, which is a trip that you don't have to make, like straight to your house. One of them is not even his I feel like I keep saying this one of them is not even his and you don't appreciate it and you're not even complaining about like all the stuff that Javi does that's wrong you're just complaining about the fact that you're used to living alone and you like it that way and you want to keep it that way like screw the fact that you've got kids who love this guy you're used to living alone <laughs> So um, Leah and Corey then find a new parking lot to exchange the kids at, and um, this time it's a truck stop. So she lets us know that Corey and her had cleared up the Mexico trip off camera, 
And um, she also tells Corey again, like, sorry for Jeremy being a shit disturber. Then when she gets back home, she complains to her sister that Jeremy is like super impulsive and doesn't think about like the consequences of his actions, which is super ironic considering this is the same girl who caused both of her divorces by cheating on her husbands with the same guy. And wasn't she also pregnant by the both of them within like the first like, couple of months? Like pot, meat, kettle. Back at Janelle's house, we see her go through tweets that surface after um, news broke that she was pregnant. Remember that whole car crash thing? And in the police report, um, she mentioned that being pregnant and then, you know, Tumblr and the Ashley and everyone got a hold of it. So she's going through all the tweets and I saw one of my homegirls, Team Mom Truth, shout out to you, Miss Tumblr. And uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, comments were really, really negative and MTV was so shady to leave them in, but I'm glad that they did because what Janelle's doing, this whole like getting pregnant by Ernie and everybody is absolutely not right and um, needs to be called out. I'm happy that they showed that stuff. So the producers go over to Janelle's mom, Barbara, house to ask her about like the pregnancy and like whether or not she thinks it's true and stuff and so Barbara's like I asked Janelle and she told me that she can't trust me and then Barbara like got really emotional she's like I think that um, Janelle is just scared of all the people who hate her and all that stuff. Barbara then starts crying about how Janelle refuses to grow up and like how she thinks it's absolutely wrong that she continues to get pregnant like with everybody that she like meets and barely knows. She pointed to how quickly like her relationship with Nathan went left before our very eyes. Like remember this is the guy who got her pregnant within a couple of months. They both planned that child and then while she's pregnant he asks her to get an abortion and then like now look at like the co-parenting mess that they're in and then she's like listen Janelle's been pregnant four times times at 24 um, sidebar like we all know it's more than four times but even like four times in itself is absolutely ridiculous and then she also makes sure to mention the fact that David himself has three kids now by three different women as well and it's like six how many parents is that five six like that's just so scary for people so young like these people are a year older than I am and they're in this like crazy mess of a life and they just continue digging their hole um, and then um, the producers ask Barbara how she thinks Jace will react and of course Barbara says that Jace will probably be really hurt by all of this. Producers were pretty instrumental in this episode because later on we got to see Adam's producer Mandy talking to him about like how you know they need to come up with stuff to film him doing. He 